Welcome to Saw Logs Plastic Hubs. This video will be whatever project I'm working on. And I don't do a separate, sometimes I do a separate opening form, sometimes I don't. Again, it's just a summer opening and uh, I just wanted to throw one out there. And we'll blend it in. It's probably when I get a chance to sit down and do some videos. Um, a lot of upcoming things that you're going to be seeing on these videos of uh, summer projects or whatnot. Well, once I kind of get back into shop for summer right now that has been occupied a lot. So I hope you uh, enjoy the channel, enjoy the videos, and subscribe and follow. So just jump right on in there. Good morning. Uh, this is a clip that's just going to probably go on a video. Uh, I'm not sure in the process of what I'm doing because I've already made a video of it. But what I wanted to show this morning is that sometimes you can be creative and not even think about it. Uh, this little piece of stainless that I'm cutting for one of those simple shop hammers need to be machined down to a certain length. So to do it, you got to saw it, and the easiest way to saw it is in, you know, in the horizontal band saw. So, I do have an adjuster, but the amount that I have to hold this part is so thin, and I just, since I'm going to make aluminum handle, and I actually have another piece of one inch stock handy, we're just going to face this, we're just going to saw this off, and I'm going to start to work on this this morning. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to throw a clip or two of this in with something else I'm going to be working on later. Uh, this is just going to be kind of, you know, I'm, you know, this is sort of the run the mill things that I do. And what it is, one of my, another one of my ex co workers, when I made the other hammer that I videoed a while back, that he, uh, asked for his was and I just hadn't said nothing about it so I'm gonna make this one up this surprise and mail it out maybe soon so we'll just let it go so there we go Again, I'm not making a video about a lot. I'm just kind of this and that. Uh, we're going to... Hold on here. I'll bring you right back. I ain't quite set up. Right. <coughs> we're going to... These quarter 20s... Oh, um, look. Now, I will tell you, I'm not an expert threader. And these are 20 pitch. I could theoretically go with any number, but I prefer just to pick one and go with it. And that's what we do. We're going to check the threads. Make sure we got a 20 pitch here. Then we're going to do this again. I'm going to today, I've had a little better luck at it. I'm going to use the Bruce Weather method, and it sends, with, with inserts, you're going to cut a little bit on both sides, but as long as you don't go crazy as crap. And this is stainless, so I definitely not going to cut much of the time. So, sit here and wait for my number. and not switch it because that way I don't have to remember because I don't thread a lot. The reason I'm single pointing this here is stainless steel 
and I'm going to thread this for a hammer. So I'm all over this checking. I know I'm not nowhere near. I just want to make sure that that looks good. I got to go about a sixty thousandths or so. I'm going to bring you back after I get a little further down. Okay, I'm down close to the end paces of this threading now. And it always pays, even though when your camera going, it does make this a lot more difficult. So, again, I'm waiting for my number. As I say, I know there's formulas, but it's better to do what I'm doing. And always remember... I'm thinking this, I'm going to go about one more pass when I get around. And the, the reason I just use it, like I say, I'm, uh, I, I don't thread often. The only reason I'm threading this is the stainless and dyes just don't work well with it. All right, let's just stop and have a check. Check them in to go, and I know I should have not started, but just tried to start them in to go. I should, and really theoretically, I've got a good ways. I should be really a good ways to go. So just always don't hurt to give it a quick check. Taking two to four thousand, and one of the things I will say here while I'm doing this, and I understand that a lot of the really, you know, people like Adam and Rock, and I'm going to tell you this, and this is might be wrong, right, or indifferent. Bruce Whittam over Australia does this, and several other people do, and it works fairly well for a reason. I'm going to set this back here. And the reason why these are inserts. They have the forms ground in them, I and and when you really get right down to it, if you thread, I have threaded on CNC lay where it's programmed to do exactly these motions that we're doing today. But uh, but the thing about it is, I should be somewhere around sixty thousand, sixty-five thousand. It's actually uh, should be what we need. So. I'm, I'm really nowhere near that. I just keep checking because I don't really want this to be a fairly tight fit. So, with the uh, all said done, the CNC lathe don't run in at 030 degree angle. Now, I have done the compound and can do it, but I seem to have a better looking thread when I do what I'm doing here. So, And like I say, I pick this one number up constantly. That way I don't have to do, you know, I don't thread every day. And if I thread it every day, it'd be a little different animal. Actually, the machine shop that I worked in, the gentleman threaded, the he hand grabbed his threading tools and all that good stuff. will give us a quick check and may end up taking us because you, when you touch, you don't know exactly where you touch at. This should get me close. I should be starting now. Or I should have a halfway start. Whoa! And that's the danger of what happens with this. You see right there? And that's what happened. And I don't know. I may have cut too much relief. Or too big a relief. And I'm not even threaded. So now... I got to go back and start all over and cut a new rod, so 
that means all over start and we've got to find something. One problem I have is I really just don't have any grooving tools. So I went over in the box and I got a bunch of high speed bits I picked up off B Bay a long time ago just for emergencies. And I ground up, tucked one of them that was broke off and done a quick grind on it and I'm going to make me a relief tool I'm going to go in there and I'm going to make this relief sort of round. And I want that thing to be pretty close to the size, which would be, I'm shooting for about 180 thousandths or so OD in the bottom. Give me a little relief. Right, I must be hit from the sides. Come on, touch this and zero it. And see what the dial says. Now, if I go about Hopefully that won't make it too small and hope that be deep enough. Hopefully that's small. What I did with the other one is that I tuck and cut it with a, I just use my cutoff tool, which I use three blades and that don't tend to work good. So I'm going to restart this and I'll bring you back here in just a few minutes. Alright, well, I'm thinking I'm down to about the, about the last pass or two. Uh, I checked it and started, so I'm going I'm to go just a hair more, and so I'm going to go. <coughs> I'm going to check it after this one. I think it may be enough. It was starting. I just went a little bit. I'm going to run this past and I'm going to spring it and then we're going to check it. One thing, I don't think I've got enough. Alright, I'm really close right here. So if I haven't missed a number or something, I should be right able to. I'm going to do another spring just to see where I'm at. Hey, what? I'm just, I'm not, I wasn't happy with that. Sometimes you just lose your concentration. It's almost better just to go back. If you realize you've got a problem, you want to, you, know, you always want to double check. We're too close right and you can get confused. It's really confusing doing threading and running the camera. I'm 
don't block much. So I'm going to go back to the same point and spring it real good. And we'll try it again. I think that should get us right up on there. Then I got to thread the other side, which I'm not going to bore you with that. blow this off we'll have all this oil on one thing I'm gonna have to do is put more chamfer and I just grind these chamfers in by hand because these quarter rods are so thin that you can't put it. it's really hard to work in the lathe with them and I could have used it there we go that's what we need right there all right I'm gonna do the other off camera of course I'm not this is just a bits and pieces video. So, you see I had a failure. And basically my failure was I basically just machined too, little, too much off and got too aggressive. Anytime you're dealing with these little bitty rods, I don't care which method, I broke them off both ways. You're dealing with a quarter inch rod and it's stainless as anyway. And if this was mild steel, I'd have had a die in a heartbeat. That's what we've got. That's what we're going to do. I hope you enjoyed today's video, uh, whatever we've done today, because usually I shoot a close and, and put together a montage at the end, so this is usually my way of saying thank you. Now, now if I haven't said it enough, I will say it. Every subscriber I've got, I appreciate. Appreciate every view I get. Now, do we have the big channel? No. Do we want to have a big channel? Well, I'd be stupid saying I wouldn't be a little jealous if I didn't, but my mode of making these videos isn't to get rich. It is to have fun. So those along come along and enjoy the videos and have fun with me, I appreciate it. But please do share it with your friends if, if they're not subscribers. And, you know, Bring them over here and let us look at another, somebody else is doing this. You know, I'm a career machinist, but, and I've always liked to make things. So when I've retired, now I really have more plenty of time. Right now, you know, we've been kind of busy with some house projects and stuff, so that slowed us up here for the last several months. But I hope you enjoy the videos, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, please subscribe. Please tell your friends, and if you are a subscriber, thank you so very much. Have a great day, and we will see you in the next video when I make another one. Alright, I'm going to go ahead, like I say, I'm not videoing everything I'm doing with this, but I wanted to show something off. Uh, I don't know how many of you subscribe to my friend down there. Um, Hilltop Machine Works Tom. We, we're, uh, we don't live that far apart. And we had lunch a while back. I actually did a video on it. With the high school son. And from when I had the shop roof, <coughs> um, they done some work and left me some flesh and I was going to throw it away. I said, nah, don't get rid of it. I'll use it. So what I'm using it for is cut up some thin shims for jobs just like this. What I saved it for, two times the other week, well, it was a month ago now. And uh, I did this one.
he showed in one of his videos where he's doing a plastic knob for, for, for another friend. And I haven't used them and showed them on video, so I thought it would. I mean, I'm not, that's why I didn't want to, <coughs> you know, this is kind of a bits and pieces video. And uh, the way it don't bar up, this is bad. And just see, they're simple. I keep them in one of the drawers and I've got them down here underneath the lathe. Okay, that's done and out of the way. So we're going to get to about 11. I'm thinking about calling it a morning.